Financial Literacy for Kids, Part 4, Checking and Savings Accounts. Today, we are going to learn all about checking and savings accounts and how they relate to financial literacy. Here are some key words we are going to discuss today. Let's see if you have heard any of these words before. Checking account, check, debit card, credit card, deposit, direct deposit, savings account, and balance. Do you recognize any of those words? Awesome! Let's start with the term checking account. A checking account is an account you can use to pay for things using money you already have in the bank. To spend this money, you can write a check or use a debit card. You can even head over to the ATM with your debit card and get some cash from that magic machine. If you have money in your account, of course. When you use a debit card, the amount you spend is taken immediately out of your checking account. On the other hand, with a credit card, you pay over time and pay interest. So you often pay more for something than it actually costs. To open a checking account, most financial institutions require that you open the account with a deposit or money that you put into the account. The amount will vary depending on the institution. You can ask an adult to help you set up your own checking account if you'd like. When you are old enough to have a job, you will get paid. The company you work for might use direct deposit to send your paycheck right to your checking account. You can pay bills like this too. You can set up automatic payments for specific services, like your favorite streaming service, for example. When you set up payments this way, the money to pay for the service comes directly out of your checking account. And you don't have to write a check or use a debit card. Just make sure that you are not spending more money than you have in your account. A savings account is designed for long-term money storage. You know, so you can save it. It is where you put money that you are not ready to use or spend yet. Unlike checking accounts, savings accounts are not meant for day-to-day -day use. And banks often only allow a certain number of transactions during a specific time limit. If you use it too often, the bank can actually charge you a fee. Another way a savings account is different from a checking account is that it pays you interest on your average balance or amount that is in the account. For example, our friend Frankie Finance had her parents help her open up a savings account last year. She put $100 in the account and earns 1.5% yearly interest on that amount. This means that she earned an extra $1.50 last year. So, the total amount of money in her savings account is now $101.50. This year, she plans on putting more money in her savings account, which will earn her even more interest over time. Neat, huh? Here is an interesting fact. You can actually link your checking and savings accounts together, which is helpful if you want to transfer money between accounts. This can be super helpful if you have extra money that you want to move to savings, or if you have to transfer money from your savings to your checking account, if you need more money to pay for something. Remember, checking accounts are for day-to-day -day purchases using money you already have, and savings accounts are for long-term money storage that can earn you interest. Understanding how to effectively use both is important because it will help you become more financially literate. Now that you know the basics of checking and savings accounts, you can head to our website, learnbright.org, to download this lesson plan.
you can practice writing your own check and making a plan for your savings account. How much money would you like to save this year? Hope you had fun learning with us. Visit us at learnbright.org for thousands of free resources and turnkey solutions for teachers and homeschoolers.